So I've got a problem with this motorhome here. This is a Toyota coaster. I cannot get this to release. So I actually used the motorhome on the weekend, just returned, being at an event. And on the way there, we stopped to get fuel. When I went to get back in the bus to you know, continue on the journey on the way there, I couldn't release the shifter. And I had to do manual release, which is this button just down here. You can push that down and it'll release it. And then you can squeeze this and pull it back, right, and, and get in the gear. Um, and that's what I've had to do all the way back as well. So there's a reason for this. Normally what you have to do is you put your foot on the brake, then you can push this button in and you can change gear, which is quite normal. Anyway, that's ceased working. And I found out why. So here it is under here. Here's the... Uh, the brake pedal just here is the switch so when you push the brake down the switch um, operates and it closes the contact between these two wires here and that turns on your brake lights yeah well I actually did some investigation on this thing and it turns out that this doesn't work anymore it's only constantly open so when you push the button down or push the brake pedal down the plunger doesn't extend and the switch doesn't close so also means you've got no brake lights not good so I've got to change the switch out it's just down here and this is on the passenger side footwell there's actually a fuse box just there and there's a cover which is normally over that this cover here you pull this off it's got legend in there for what the fuses are and just there the third one over on the top row is a stop lamp fuse so I've got to pull that fuse out that will disable power to that switch hopefully and that way if I touch the wiring and something and short it out it doesn't matter because that would be bad too so here is the switch out you can see that this has been replaced before this is not the original this has got a join in here and what I also noticed is that when I took this out on the actual pedal there's supposed to be like a little disc on the front which pushes against this switch activator. Now I actually found that on the floor broken on, on the bus, right? So I already found this yesterday. I was thinking, where's that come from? I was already really suspicious about what this thing was. It's basically is like a little plastic disc, but it's got waxy and it's basically it's lost all its strength. The, the plastic's broken down. So that's actually fallen apart and fallen off and it was on the floor. So that wasn't actually activating the switch. That's maybe what caused the switch to fail. Maybe it wasn't activating properly. Maybe it was stuck on and it caused it to burn out, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, just now, I was just pushing this plunger really hard. So it was sitting about there and it wouldn't really move, right? And I pushed it really hard and it popped in like that. And now it's coming right back out. And it's got like a point right there where it's binding. So I think this switch is now freed up. I bet it now works. It's got a point, this is like binding a little bit there. So I don't know if I can maybe pull this apart. It looks like it's pressed. I might be able to lever these out and repair the switch. But right now, it looks like it's actually working again. So what I need to do is actually replace the piece which broke off. I should actually try and find it again, see if I can find it. But yes, yeah, this little disc, probably, um, I don't know, how, how big. Can't we give an example here? Probably about the size of the end of the capacitor. Maybe slightly bigger than that. Yeah, probably slightly bigger than that. And it's just like waxy, some kind of poly material which is broken down, turned to wax. It's probably a polypropylene or something like that. And it's just broken down. And um, that would normally push against the end of this plunger. And now this plunger's moving. When this is in the bus, I actually tried pushing this. And it also was about, you know, there. And I did actually try pushing it in the bus and it wouldn't move. And just now before I started recording, I should have started recording first. I pushed it really hard, it popped in. And now so it's moving, whereas before it was fr it was completely frozen, it wouldn't work at all. Let's just do beeper. Yeah, that's working now. Of course it is. Now I've got the thing out. Trying to push it. And get a decent connection on here. You said a half high point where it's binding, that's where it's open. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't trust it. I think I might have a look at, see if I can pull it apart and actually um, have a look inside it and see if I can clean it a bit or something. I think it probably is um, damaged slightly, but because it did stick. But at least it means I probably don't have to replace the switch. I can just put it back in again and then look at fixing the brake pedal. There's another problem with the bus as well at the moment. On the way back, it started getting really rough and bouncy on the way back. And then we hit bumps in the road, it really had a big impact. I was thinking it was shock absorbers. It's not, it's something else. And it's got airbag suspension on it. So that'd be another video, which I think I need to look into fixing the airbag suspension because something's gone wrong with that. Two things going wrong at once, it's annoying. Right, let's see if I can open this thing up. Now, it looks like the ends fold over. And it's got these press bits here too. But what I'm thinking I can probably do is to push the ends out. And fold those ends. Like that. Do the same on this side. Now there's a pretty powerful spring in there pushing that back. Now I should be able to fold these sides out and that should release these bits there too. So let's try that. It's one side. And it's the other side to try and hold it in at the same time. It's probably going to spring apart. Alright. Come on, I don't want to break the switch. If I can avoid replacing it, it'd be good. Right, there we go. Start to move. Right, so here's the big spring. There's the contacts, each side. Yeah, this one's been arcing quite badly. And the contacts on that side. So it's, it's, these are crimped straight onto these wires, right? And these look just like blade terminal shoved in there, see that? So what if I can actually pull those out? But I don't want to pull out. Maybe there's some kind of a tiny lug in there. Yeah, it probably is actually. Okay, that's cleanable. These contacts here, there's the go, there's the plunger. You can see there's a bit of issue in that one, and this has had a lot of problem. So yeah, you can see that's been having a bad day. So really the switch should be replaced, I think. I stuck a multimeter across it, and I actually measured about four amps, three and a half amps going through this thing. It's not that much current, but if you've got a dirty contact, then yeah, it's going to cause a problem, or it's only barely touching. Then it's also going to cause a problem, not shutting off fully. That's probably what this has done, because it hasn't pushed back in far enough. Just sitting on the edge there, and that's what's caused it to, to go and be a problem. I don't know, I can probably file that a bit or something, and try and get that back. Keeping in mind that I probably should replace this switch. Let's see if we can fix it. So right here I've got a diamond bit thing, this is really handy this actually, I'll use it for a lot of things. So let's just give it a go with this, see if it's actually clean up a little bit. I mean this is also plated, I think. It might be alright once I get the rough bits off. It's definitely getting better. Yeah, see that's smoothing out quite nicely there. That's good. Um, I'm fairly happy to do that. I'll see if I can just get it smoother. So it doesn't have any big lumps on it, then it's probably be good enough. Yeah, this is copper contact. Yeah, it's getting better. It's not ideal. I, you know, if I can get a replacement switch that will fit in there easily, then I'll, I'll put one in. But I think they're about forty bucks or something. But I'll just see if I can find something suitable. The ones I've seen aren't exactly the same as what's in here. So mind you, this has failed. So mm, <laughs> maybe that's a good thing. Anyway, we'll just try and get that smooth. That's not too bad there. Touch this side up some more. Right, let's do the finer side. Just a more polishing rather than grinding away. It's not looking too bad there. Pretty really happy with that. Yep. Anyway, once this is good, I'll 
clean up the inside of it as well so I've got to do the actual things that this goes up against because there's probably some issues with those too but this should at least mean it's not binding anymore yeah it's looking much better now so yeah so that's what it's looking like now not perfect but you can see it's got the big lumps off it at least there's a bit of a pitted hole there I'll see if I can get it down to get rid of that but you see it's getting a bit thin there so I don't go too much and this side here has got a couple of little pitted bits as well but it's looking a lot better no real lumps on it so I have to see if I can do the same thing with this somehow maybe give a scrape inside there no, it's not looking too bad there I think it's just on the very edge so it's probably fine but yeah I'll resurrect this switch and we'll see we go put some dilated grease in it I noticed there wasn't any we'll put some of this in there because it didn't have any before I'm sure this would be a good idea get plenty on there I'll probably flood the inside of it as well just make sure it's got plenty going on I've cleaned up the inside as well the other stuff so this will hopefully do the job plenty in there right. pretty sure a bit of lubrication is a good thing just ask your wife go in there like that. It's nice, it's nice and smooth in there. So we attach it to this. Now it's got a certain way up that way. That way like that. I'll squash the sides in to hold it back in. There we go. I'll give it a crimp with some pliers or something. But that. So that binding is obviously where that um, switch fingers are coming into contact with the actual um, fingers from here. That's actually feeling more switch like, actually. That's feeling acceptable. So that's good. I think I'm just going to say crimp these up a bit harder so that it'll fold it over nicely. And um, yeah, that's feeling good now. Right, let's check for connections on this thing now. Show those on there, see so what connections. So that's a nice, look at that, 0.1 ohms, that's basically leave resistance. So that's good. So there's no issues there with connection when it's actually active. Yep. Yep, that's looking good. I'm happy with that. That switch appears to be repaired. That's only half the problem, don't forget. Seems George has come to join me. So here's a bit of what's left of it, and that's just a retaining clip. There was like a disc, and it looked a bit like one of these. Very similar to this thing. So I'm going to see if I can actually use this to replace it with. I do have other clips, so I'm just going to try this one first and see if that works. So just up there, I don't know if you can see it or not. Probably not. This on the back of the pedal, right? There's a hole which should have the little plug in it. I don't think you can see it on camera, fortunately. But you can see the threaded hole where the switch was, and opposite that is where the little plug should be. Well, here we go. Engine is running. Let's put on the brake. See if it goes into gear. Uh, look at that. Is fixed. Excellent. <laughs> 